All right, folks, we're working on 2012. Chevrolet, of course. That's all we ever work on, it seems. Uh, that's not true, but we work on a lot of them. Um, that's because there's a lot of them in our area. It's a Traverse. It's got the 3.6. Customer wants his rear brakes installed. He brought us some pads and rotors. I think we're going to end up finding more. I see the parking brake cable is sagging down, and both the actuators are stuck forward. So I'm assuming that there's probably no parking brake shoes. <laughs> So we'll see what's going on with that. Look at that, some kind of fancy aftermarket brake hose. It's kind of dangling in outer space here. There we go, wrong side. 14, not 13. grabbed an 18 thinking that's what these bracket bolts are and that's not even close 21 fella right 21 yep 21 Mother oh they're a little snug feels like they got the loctite on them bits out here it looks like let's see here there's a t30 it looks like a guy what's up let's go okay could be just a moment there oh i was just trying to baby it usually those are stuck let's see what kind of mess we've got behind here Ta-da! Just as I suspected. No parking brake shoes, so before I even tear the other side apart, let me see if I can get a hold of these today. Like I say, the actuators I know are all seized up. Which I'm not sure if we can get them out without pulling wheel bearings on this model. But if you pull the bearing, you know the magnet's gonna fall off it and it just kind of kicks that uh, proverbial snowball down the slope here. Uh, let me see if I can at least get shoes for us. They're going all hot wild on you. I forgot to turn the camera on. I removed this upper spring and this one retainer here that I noticed that I'm over here just talking to myself and nobody's watching. Uh, nobody has parts. Vance Auto, Napper, the other independent shop. Nobody's got nothing. So I'm gonna tear it apart, see if we're gonna run anything else. This is the only sucky part about customers bringing their own parts is we never have enough to do the whole job. I just need to end that once and for all, I guess. This is frustrating. Well, get off there. Ah, got he. So, there's that one. You'll probably understand a little better when we start putting it together. Pins out from the back. Oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. There, there's one shoe. There's the other shoe. Buckle my shoe. Actuator, she's locked up tiger tight. 
I don't know if we unhook the cable from the back side if we can tip it up enough to get it out. Like I say, if you pull the bearings off and the rust belt here, you might better plan on buying a new bearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I looked at it from the back and where it comes through the backing plate is very tight. So there's no like up and down movement per se enough to get it out. So we're gonna get some Panther P, give it a little spread, see if we can't free it up right here. We'll get everybody's favorite, Croil. Well, some people's favorite. Some people hate it, some people love it. Uh, we could spray with the garden hose, I'd be just as happy. It'd be just as effective, <laughs> let's be honest. Cause that's about as long as we're gonna wait. We're gonna massage it. You wanna get your sissy girl air hammer, the lightweight one with good trigger control. And we're just gonna massage this thing. Just ever so lightly. Just back and forth. Camera's right in the way. Spritz her down with this. Okay, just keep massaging it. No wonder you can't hear. I'm just barely tapping it, old girl. It's not super loud. What's up, man? I'm super pissed off today. <laughs> you know? Is that helping you? No. Then stop being pissed off. I really just want to chuck this freaking thing at the wall and go kick something. What's up? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to smile. Like What's a up? Good one. <laughs> I'm gonna go close up. Okay, I'll be here waiting, smiling the whole time. Great. Yeah. I don't know why I keep spraying it. Oh, you're back, huh? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'm thinking about you where you're going. All we're doing with the air hammer is essentially just vibrating it. Just vibrates the rust out. You can say, oh, got to answer this, folks. Stand by. Go. So you can see how we got that freed up now? So it maybe moves back and forth okay. I don't know what you guys can see up in there, but we'll just pull all the rust and crap out of it. And then, uh, Car needs a pass inspection anyway, so it needed the parking brake fix, but yeah, you know, let's get that cleaned out. Got some brake clean. I'll just get the initial blasting off and get a blow nozzle. Beautiful. Well, now we just, now we wait. That's pretty much all I can do for today, folks. We don't have any parts. So it's gonna be stuck here on my lift. Um, hopefully Napa gets us the right stuff tomorrow. I've got the shoes and hardware, which we can put that on without pulling the bearing, but uh, so we gotta do that. And I, th I think that's it. So I'm gonna wait for that stuff uh, tomorrow, which only be like, well, half a second for you guys. Just like that, we're back. 
parts have arrived. We're gonna take and put a little anti-seize lubricant on these little slider pads. I don't know how important it is on a set of parking brakes, but if it was a set of drum brakes, uh, you would definitely lube those areas. We sure have been getting our share of rain lately, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> We're gonna stick a pin through from the back. We're gonna put our shoe on this. This end here goes down to the actuator. The more open end goes up towards the adjuster. So stick that on there. We'll see if we can do this with the camera right in the way. Oh, probably not because I'm, I'm using my wrong hand. So we've got our spring on there. Let's try it. We'll try it wrong handed here. Oops, we dropped that one on the floor. We got one left before we gotta go pick stuff up. Let's try this one. Well, this is weird. We'll give it a try though. Let's see. Question turn. There we go. We got that one on. Let me find one we dropped on the floor. It's just like the first one we did just on the other side, you know? We'll stick our spring there. We'll see if we can't get our cart underneath here in case we drop this. Our spring, or our cup there, our little cup tool, they're somewhat lined up here. Push and turn, did we get it? Oh boy, that's about to fly off. Come on. Get in there and turn, baby. Wow, come on. There we go. Okay, so it's just a little cup tool that allows you to you know, push on that cup. It has little serrations in it. Two different sizes. This is the smaller one. Put our shoes over here on the actuator. This is the tricky part is the spring. So we'll slide that in. We'll, we'll get it hooked in on one side here. And then up on this other side, we'll see if we can't get a hold of it. I like to bring it down just enough to get some vice grips on it here if we can. Hopefully we got a good enough bite, otherwise you can catch yourself in the teeth. Pull and latch it in. And that's it. That's our bottom spring. Then we'll throw our adjuster in the top. Now our kit came with the new adjuster. And I put them in in such a fashion that when I flick it up, it tightens the shoes. Uh, service data doesn't specify which way it goes. That's just a personal preference that I do. We'll just kind of get that slid in there like that. And that way there, like I say, when you come in here and flick it up, the shoes get bigger. You know what I mean? Or they, they spread out. So we're going to put our spring on it now. We'll stick it right there. Grab it like that, and pull. Oh yeah, that's how you know you did it good. When it sounds like that, you did a good job. So obviously, the spring is different than the OEM. Awesome. All right, so we'll go like that. We'll have to put the spring on the back side. We have no choice. I'm not gonna leave this thing on my lift for another day waiting for an OEM spring kit. There's around here, as far as parts go, uh, we can only get one brand. So Dorman is the only one who makes spring kits for every parts store here, whether it's Advance Auto or down there at Fast Freddy's. It's all the True Stop or whatever they call it. Let's see, we need to move our pliers down a little closer to the center here. So it just makes a simple job like this like 10 times harder. <laughs> makes you wonder how they can sell this crap though, you know, because I'm not the only one who has the problem. Trust me. <laughs> Let's see, okay. 
All right, that's all hooked in there. Okay. Get down there. There. And I like it. Okay, not too bad. If we have to loosen it, it makes it a little tougher, but it's not getting wadded up on there as bad as I thought it would. Not, not too bad, actually works pretty good on the inside. Uh, like I say, if you check service data, it is you know clearly on the outside, and I believe that's the way we removed it. I don't know; it was too many hours ago. some goo on the actuator with buffer excess I'm gonna go yank on the cable you're gonna see this move now uh, you're likely only gonna see one shoe move and that's that's okay trust me only one shoe is probably gonna move because it has to have the rotor on to make this work or the drum once one shoe makes contact then the other shoe will wedge out but when there's no resistance you're only gonna see one shoe move I could be wrong they might both move but I doubt it Hopefully something's moving over there for you. But that's what that looks like and that's how you know that it works. Hopefully you saw something. So this hub's actually pretty clean. Double check in here. I know it looks a little dark, you know, like where it sits, but I think somebody must have changed this bearing not too awful long ago, but yeah, there's actually not any real thick rust buildup in here. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really look too bad. Uh, I, you know, we don't have to get out the grinder or anything or the wheel. So we'll put a little fluid film on there. Yep, a little bit got on his shoes. You saw that right. Go get our T, whatever we had here. T30. We'll put that baby in, just finger tight. That's good. Our adjustment still feels really good. So the bracket I've already sandblasted out where the pads go. Made sure the uh, pins are lubed up and free and moving and have good boots on them. We'll slide our pads down in here. Again, these are customer supplied parts. Uh, you can't really mess up where the squealers go on these because they're on every pad and every location. <laughs> so you'll get them right no matter where you put them. Slip that baby in there. There's a lot of spring tension on the bottom of these uh, hardware clips here so there we are like I said make sure your your pins are nice and free and all that and then we're gonna take some Loctite a little bit of the orange we'll get our caliper bolts these are torqued at like 130 foot-pounds they're pretty tight oops you can use blue Loctite or whatever you have the orange supposedly has the strength of red releases like blue at least that's what they tell me. We'll just make sure we get it on both bolts here. I do like the gel a little bit better than the stuff out of the bottle, but there's that. Okay, let's get our bracket put on here. Let's 
slide that right there. Get that bolt started. Get this bolt started. There's that, we'll grab our torque wrench. Let's see if we can't. There's that one there. that one. I'll take the caliper here and give it a big squeeze. So we'll push that back nice and easy. Set that right there. Get us some lube. Grab some bolts. Slip it right down there where it needs to go. Not real fond of these brake hoses. There's no holders for them. They're just kind of hanging in outer space here, just dangling off the lines. And these things are just about finger tight. So 20 foot pounds, so not very much, folks. Oh, we got a spinner. This one's rotating on us. Thing over here we got some bike scripts we'll come in here with that don't pinch the uh, rubber boot there so there's that that's all you need you're done the other thing we need to do though folks he wants us to look at his TPMS uh, supposedly all the tires are set at the same pressure just one of them reads incorrectly on the dash so we're going to check that so this one reads 37.4 I'm just gonna let it down to 35 when I pulled it in, they were all reading uh, like 37, 36, and one of them is, was at 40 something. So I set that one at 35. Let's go check the other one. Could just have the sensor starting to fail. This one's at 35. This one's at 43. <laughs> you said you checked them all before you brought it here. Usually if I see one of these go corrupt, it, it reads like way off, like, you know, two pounds or, you know, a hundred. But I'm assuming just all the tire pressures are, are off. Last but not least, I'm gonna assume this one is like 37, if I remember right what it was saying on a dash. Yep, 36.6, .6, so we'll let it down to 35. What we'll do now is we'll use our Altel CITS 600. Uh, it's a TPMS tool. We're gonna go around and capture all the data of all of these wheels, and then we're gonna make sure that the car is programmed correctly. Uh, now, when I say that, I mean that the tires are learned in the correct position. That's all we need to do. This tool doesn't do anything. You know fancy beyond that all we can do is tell the car where the tires are at it does the rest this doesn't have anything to do with you know programming any type of you know tire pressure changing the readings and dash or anything so we can see all our tires are between 35 and 36 psi so we're going to go to relearn and then we're going to go obd relearn there is a dongle inside the car that's plugged in and our horn should start blowing and all that stuff here in just a moment. Usually it'll it'll put it right into relearn mode instead of you can do it by going through the dash too, but oftentimes I'll do it this way. There we go. OBD relearn is good. And now they should read the correct position on the dash. We should have updated our pressures from triggering the sensors. Let's see what we have here. Just 
plug our dongle down here. So this is the dongle that goes with that. Let's see, we will push our info button. 35, 35, 36, 35. So yep, so she's that on. So before, like I say, it was reading, you know, 37, 35, 40 something. But usually if you have a sensor that goes corrupt, one of these will be significantly off more than the other. So there we go. All right, we're gonna take this thing for a rip. See how the brakes feel. here 35 on both the fronts and our left rear is at 36 35 so uh, needless to say there's nothing wrong with this tpms system so that's it folks 211,000 miles on a 3.6 gm it can't be the original engine or transmission i wouldn't think <laughs> these things don't last that long uh unless it's barring some kind of miracle but anyhow, uh, that was it. Pretty easy job. Rear pads, rotors, customer supplied parts, and then we ran into the hiccup of, you know, not having park and brake shoes or hardware, which set us back a day or so, which that kind of sucks. But we we're able to get through that. We we're able to get through the problem there with that spring on the adjuster. I did double check service data. The spring is supposed to go on the outside, uh, just as I thought or as it was, you know, with the OEM. But with some of this aftermarket stuff, you, you do what you got to do. Uh, it actually worked out pretty well, put that on the inside. Side, I think um, it you know held at the bottom of that adjuster it keeps the spring out of the adjusting window there if you will in the rotor and you know it seemed to hold the adjuster nicely gave it you know like some kind of positive clicks uh, sometimes with the OEM ones boy they can be a pain because you know the springs on the outside and you're you know trying to flick past it and you can't and the adjuster is just rocking back and forth and that can be a bit of a bit of a pain sometimes you're reaching up in there with a pick and a screwdriver to hold the spring out of the way and turn the adjuster so that's it tpms system i don't see anything wrong with it uh you know the left rear wheel may have like a you know one psi discrepancy but it's not worth you know going bananas over um that's it what i do want you to go bananas over is leaving your comment questions comments concerns the insta the facebook you guys know where to find us and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching